Hey friends, it's Brian. It's time for another HVAC video. So, I went ahead and installed the uh, blocking to raise the overflow pan up. And I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get this drain connected up. Because that's, that's really the next thing that needs to happen. Um, so anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you find out when I release new videos. I organize all the other videos in this project under playlists, so be sure to check those out too. So one of the things that I think was wrong with the previous systems installation is the trap wasn't deep enough, and I'm not quite ready to buy another trap, so I'm going to see if I can cut this one and extend it. And that would be a hard no. So I've got to buy another trap probably. Yeah, I don't think this is going to happen. Nope. So let me go order one of these and we'll pick up on this some other time. All right, folks. So I have decided that I'm going to make my own trap. Um, the rector seal trap that I had, you know, I, I, I will admit this is nice. It was easy to clean, but it wasn't deep enough. And I constantly had issues uh, with... Um, the the previous unit pulling the trap dry and i think this unit probably has better suction so i'm going to make my own trap and i'm not going to recycle the uh, fitting that was in here i'm going to use a new fitting because the other fitting was really for electrical so that's good enough and Set those there. See if this gets us out far enough. Maybe this gets out far enough. That will get us out far enough. Let me go grab my gloves real quick, or some gloves. One of the nice things about this is I'm able to use some PVC that I've been saving for years. It's probably, you know, seven or eight years old, six, seven years old. <clears throat> and having a little problem with the can having glued itself shut. This happens pretty frequently, so. There we go. All the strength I can muster. And then we'll just stick this in here. Now, fortunately, I bought a couple of tees because we're going to need them. So the first tee goes on here and this is really a little too big but that's okay we're gonna try and get this upright all right and now we're gonna start putting this together So I'm coming over four inches. This has a couple of benefits. One of them is I own the pieces. The other is it's cheap. Oh, we didn't want to do 
do that. Remember, you want to rotate these in. And <clears throat> get away with a little bit there. Now, one of the things they want to do, I do want to recycle this valve because it's an important part of this system. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that with this. That goes away. But this will get saved. And I don't have any more adapters. Um, so... I'm actually going to just glue this in like this because I have plenty of one-inch pipe downstairs. And I don't have a ton of um, three-quarter inch pipe. I mean, I have a little bit. So one of the things you saw me do was rotate this. Um, I'll talk a little bit about my design here. So to flush the line, I have a hot water inlet, <laughs> but I'm going to have to scoot that whole assembly over in order to make this work. And um, I think one inch was less likely to clog. So I'm going to... Uh, I'm, I'm going to install this right here. And we're going to do that right now. Not worried about the towel. It is a junk towel. And I have entirely too many of those. Okay. That's nice. So I need to figure out the distance here. Just temporary seal that up. Ah, I tried to keep this off my fingers. <clears throat> so this distance looks like it's about nine and a half inches. I'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna get busy with this. Should have done this last week, but whatever. Sometimes I need my time to make up my mind. This is one of those times. This is more reused pipe. I don't know if this actually came out of anything or if this is just pipe that was uh, in my stockpile and didn't get used from prior work. Remember, I'm going for leak-free, not pretty. It's okay that that's turning. Uh, we can slow that down a little bit here. Maybe this. This will get dealt with eventually in the near future. So we've got a couple small pieces of pipe. These need to have caps on them. When I went to Home Depot, the bins were a mess as usual, so I didn't get the caps that I wanted. Uh, but these caps will... Uh, this one will not get a cap. 
In fact, that one just gets left the way it is. So we're gonna go ahead and glue it. This is a vent and under no circumstances can it overflow. That's why it's so tall. There we go. The next thing that we need to do is move the other pipe back. And it looks like it needs to come back six inches. So what we're going to do, I'm gonna reposition this camera real quick. That is an awful lot for this particular style of cutter, but we made it, that's what matters. So right about where that tape is. Ratchet cutter would really be better in this particular instance, but again, it's done. We're after results and we got them. that tape was on there but we'll retire it right now all right now for a little magic And then we'll just hold this for a few seconds. There we go. At that point, we have a trap. And this is rain or shine, so in about 20 minutes, it will be good to go. The only thing that really needs to happen is we really need a, um, we really need, and here's a neat little trick you can pull to wrap up your messy waist. Um, really need a cap for that so and I don't I'm pretty sure I do not have one that stays open this allows me to cut this off turn that on and that will blow water down there to clear anything out of the line I can drop bromine tablets in here to keep this trap clean this is a deep trap um, again I had problems with this trap being pulled dry so I've made this trap larger than anything I think it needs to be. Um, and I think this will be fine. Um, so this is six inches deep, four inches deep, four inches wide. It's a big trap. Um, worst case, I'll end up having to blow it out, but I don't, I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, I would suck it out from this side first. Let me go see if I can find a cap for that. Of all the shit that I have in this house, I should have a cap somewhere. Um, and uh, really it ought to be a screw-in cap, to be quite honest. You know, I wonder if it has to be as high as it is. Because if it doesn't, I could just put that in there and that would give me a little rise with a screw-in cap and that's really what we're going for. So let's do that.
A smaller brush would be better, but this will work. There we go. And then all we have to do is buy a threaded cap to screw on there, and that'll give us a nice seal. So um, let me bring this system up and let's get it running. Um, in the short term, I can use a foil cap to block this off. That will hold us for the moment. So let me go uh, start this system up. Okay, so I just fired the system up, put it in cool mode. Fan's blowing, I still need to make a, a takeoff for the duck. That's not today's project. We'll deal with that soon enough. Um, the project right now is just, can we get some central air conditioning? Probably 60% of it is going down the ductwork into the house. That's, that's good enough for me. I'm, I'm okay with that. I don't feel any cooling. I don't feel any heat. Let's go downstairs and look. So we're not on yet. It's got a delay. We're still in the delay mode. So it just kicked on. It's super, super quiet when it comes on. I mean, you'll, you can hear the fans. Barely. It's like a giant mini split, and that's the whole idea. A giant, super efficient mini split. So I hear, I, I can feel some warmth going back. That means I've got uh, liquid refrigerant flowing. All right, let's go see what's going on. Actually, you know what? I just heard it starting to ramp up, so I'm going to stay out here for a second. It's 100 degrees out today. It's like 98 right now. So it's a really impressive unit. Uh, the tech support from HVAC Direct has been underwhelming. There isn't any. You call in, they'll tell you, they'll call you back. The one guy called me back once, left me a message. I called him back, never heard from him again. Called in last Monday, it's been a week. I still haven't heard from anybody. So you're pretty much on your own if you buy one of these and um, that's okay as long as you know what you're doing. But just realize you're on your own. So far, everything looks like it is working normally. I'm going to prime the trap. Oh, I thought I had it open. for that idea that bottle sucks but it did prime the trap I don't feel it pulling in anymore and that's that's what I wanted to see this is warm this one should be cold yep it is cold so everything looks like it's working normally. Next thing I need to do is I want to put a cutoff switch on the secondary and then I'm going to put a, a pan mounted cutoff switch as well. 
Uh, and that'll just give me some extra assurance. I heard the unit throttle a little bit. That's awesome. That's exactly what we want out of a, a hybrid communicating system, which is what I'm calling this. Um, you know, the only dull spot in this whole system has been the absolute lack of technical support. Other than that, it's a fantastic system. It's neat. It's cutting edge. I think it's going to be hyper efficient. It's a perfect fit for a spray foam house. But I wish Medea would sell these directly because um, the company that they licensed it to, ACIQ, which seems to be a part of HVAC Direct, Again, I've had absolutely no support out of them. Now, I, in all fairness, I did not tell them that I have a YouTube channel with 10,000 subscribers. I just told them I was Joe Blow because I really want to know how they're going to treat you guys if you buy one and install it. Um, at this point, I think we're done, but the next thing we need to do is we need to turn the air conditioner off and see if the system cuts off like it's supposed to. Last time it did not. Um, it had a mind of its own that it just kept on flipping running and I had to turn the power off to it. So what I want to do real quick next is um, put the system in fan only mode and see if the air conditioning part shuts off. So I'm going to go downstairs and do that. I'll be right back. So unfortunately we're having the same problem we had last time which is uh, the unit runs, it cools fantastic but it ignores the command to shut off. It just keeps running when cool for, call for cool has been turned off for over five minutes now. Outdoor units running, indoor units running. Uh, thermostat thinks it's off. Um, and unfortunately there is no tech support. So I'll have to try and rattle their cage on Monday. Uh, hopefully I have a little bit of time for it. Let me see what this looks like. Can't really tell. So we'll put on our little ghetto rig cap there. Uh, I think we're making condensate, but you know, it's gotta be. It's, it's, it's blowing nice and cool, works fantastic, uh, just doesn't wanna shut off. I'm gonna let it run for a little while and see if it eventually decides to shut itself off, but it should not. I mean, when I took the call for cool away and the fan cool call away, it should have shut the hell down and it didn't. Uh, about all I can do at this point is take it off. I verified that it's wired correctly. Um, you know, uh, I, personally, I think it's the tech they have my tickets assigned to because he just didn't seem real enthusiastic. Eh, it's very, very frustrating. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this, and we'll, I'll, I'll hopefully I'll have a better update for you soon. So I looked at the instructions and apparently there's some kind of test mode in this thing. If you hit this button here, uh, right there, that apparently puts it at 76 degrees. And it'll, it'll come on all by itself here in just a second. Yep, the fan motor's just moved a little bit. So there it goes. And then if you hit this again, I don't know what FC is. But if you hit it a third time, it turns off. And I think those are some kind of test mode. So I'm gonna turn the fan on. So let's see if the fan, the fan should come on at this point because the system's calling for fan. I just don't know what the hell is going on. It's ignoring the 24 volt thermostat. They put this in cool, 74. You know, I get that the outdoor unit has a, a, a time delay on it, but the indoor unit shouldn't. The fan should come on and off on command. If it's really, truly going to respond to 24 volts, it should respond. And it's just flat out ignoring me. 
So let's, you know, we're in fan on. Clearly the fan is not on right now. And I couldn't tell you why. So I'm gonna switch modes here to FC. I don't know what FC is. I'm gonna turn it off and then I'm gonna turn it back on. So it came on at 75 degrees. Fan came on. I put it in FC mode. Fan. Auto. That should turn the fan off. And FC doesn't line up with any of the error codes on this sheet inside the door. Oh, I see. DFFC is normal operation state. So again, it's just running. It's not, it's not listening to the thermostat. So um, I don't know what the deal is there. It's really, really, really frustrating. You know, it runs just fine all by itself. It just doesn't listen to the thermostat. And the thermostat's wired correctly. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what to do. I know what I can't do, call for help, because so far tech support's ignored me. The only thing that makes any sense to me at this point is to wire in the uh, communicating thermostat and see what it does. Let me go read some manuals. I'm going to turn it off in the meanwhile. And the easiest way it seems to be to turn it off is to do that. I don't know what the hell that does because the documentation on this thing sucks. But that does seem to turn it off. All right, so I'm going to do a little bit of side work here. Uh, I need to pull this down just a little bit but I need to fasten this down first So oh, that's good there. So over here, we're gonna take this off again because I think I have an idea what the hell's going on. And I am very irritated about this because the documentation just sucks. It's not very well written. Uh, there is an updated version of the manual and it has some pages that are not in the version that was available six weeks ago when I bought this and that came with the unit. So I've turned it off. I uh, killed the switch outside for the power and we're going to revisit the settings. Uh, I got to go find my headset because I need light. Be right back. So I think this would be really irritating for anyone that did this. Uh, it comes defaulted to 000 for 41, but Switch 1-1 one, one has to be on in order for 24-volt control to work. So then, 
cold wind protection is number two. Off, that's fine. Switch number three is cooling and heating. We want cooling and heating turned on. This is a heat pump unit. So we'll turn that switch on. Switch one, four is a kit, so we leave it off. Um, <clears throat> switch two, one. Uh, we want to delay electric heating at least six, two. Number two, two, we want to delay it at least 30 minutes. Two degrees. Electrics are hitting delay start time, yes. Which would be three. Electric hitting compressor allowed open limit. I don't know what that means, so I'm gonna leave it off. So four one, the default is on to combine W one and W two. Dehumidification off by default, so that should be there. And then switch four by itself, which I don't know which one that is. So let me see if I can figure that out. So, I think switch four is up here. Oh, four one is down here. It's completely possible that the dial codes are wrong outside as well, so we probably need to go take that apart and look. So let's go make sure that the, the 24 volt stuff is turned on outside. So um, it'll be a pain in the ass to get to, but it's worth it. Let's go look. So one of the other things that needs to happen is you have to bend up this because none of this is set up for, oops, I gotta find that. Hell that went. All right, let's check this circuit dip switch. So everything is off on the dip switch. And that means we're indoor throttling, 485 communication scheme between indoor and outdoor, and cooling, heating, target pressure, compensation value is invalid. Okay, I don't know what the hell that means. I still don't know where I lost a screw. Yeah, that happens. So 
So fortunately these screws don't do much except hold this little cover on. You have to bend the cover up uh, in order to get around uh, need one but I want to see if I can find the second one All right, just for the record, I did find the second screw. It was hiding off underneath uh, a piece of irrigation drip tubing. Let's go upstairs and see if this thing works. All right, so I've turned it on. And let's just see what the hell happens. So it's saying zero, zero. That's a change. Let me see if zero, zero means something. Indoor EEPROM malfunction. That's what that means. So that suggests we have a code set wrong. Zero, 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 one. Communication malfunction between indoor and outdoor units. So let's turn it back off. Oh wait, hey, there it goes. The fan came on. That's what we commanded. So let's turn the fan off and see what happens. The fan went off. All right, I'm beginning to feel like we have control again. I'm gonna turn the fan on again. Ah, I see the fan coming on. Oh, I feel like I have control. So maybe it was just a bunch of dip switches that were wrong. I'm still not convinced they're right. I'm gonna turn it back off again. All right, I feel like we have control. So I think it was dip switches being set wrong. And it pisses me off because they said that it was shipped to do 24 volt control with hybrid between the two units. So let's see if we can go into air conditioning before we button the damn thing back up. Now keep in mind when I control it from my phone, it has to go to Residio and then come back to the thermostat and then click here.
So I'm going to turn on the emergency heat for just a second. All right, we have fan. All right, so we switched over to cool. We're just gonna see if it'll come on in air conditioning mode. All right. I think it's working, guys. I think that was the issue, is the switches were, were jacked up. I'm going to turn it back off again and see if it cuts off. It does. It's responding to control. And now the question is, did the outdoor unit respond to control? But we're going to find that out in a minute. I'm going to put this uh, panel back on and then go check and see if the outdoor unit's off. And if it is, I might trust it enough to let it run tonight. There we go. So let me locate the screws that go to this little plate and leave them here. Let's go see if outside turned off. Doesn't feel like it, but let's go see. So the unit's not off, but the pipe's not cold and that pipe's not hot. So I think it's just running the heat out of itself. Why is there water down here? So I think it's behaving. I'm gonna let it run.
Yeah, in fact, here it is. It just powered itself down. So it shut off on its own. I think it can be trusted to run tonight. Let's see what it does. So we're going to clean that lens off. Seventy four is the temperature that we like it in this house, so we're gonna set seventy four from down here, and we'll see if it comes on upstairs. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these little screws back in. All right. It should have some kind of a timer of a uh, few minutes here. Um, so I'm gonna look at the instructions while I read through that. So this is the outdoor unit. We don't need any of that. Airflow and some other tables. So really it's just page 39. I am going to look at something though. And there it goes, it just came on. Oh, I think I do have a switch set wrong. So let me open this back up and fix that. So, one, two, three, four, one, off, four, three, I don't know what four, four does, but four, two, That keeps uh, dehumidification off by default.
Okay, so I think we're good. Other than making it mad by turning it on and off like that. Yeah, it's on. I think it's got to go through its cycle of on off. Yeah, that got pretty cold there. So it's probably pretty mad at us. Sorry about the dead silence here, guys. I'm just waiting for this thing to come back on. And I'm betting it's, it's shedding all the extra load outside. Yeah, this is not in the version of the manual that I had. Fortunately, I could download it because I'd have been lost without that. I don't, I don't think that stuff's covered anywhere in there. So we're going to work on the flexible duct connector and uh, starting to build a transition probably tomorrow and Monday. So it should be three minutes is what the reset period should be. Only thing I can do that would be different at this point is I could open up this little cover and see what's going on in here, see if I've got power. Yep, I have power. So it's alive, it's just in timeout mode. This should have been a little clear cover right here. This, that's one thing I would do differently, is I would, I would not have covered the diagnostic LED. So we're just waiting on the outside unit to reset at this point.
So I just turned it to circulate, which will just blow some air around the house. But it did come on. Let me see if I've got anything going on from outside. Yeah, it's in air conditioning mode. So I think that's a wrap. I'm going to run it for the night and just see how it does and uh, see if I wake up to any nasty surprises. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to like, subscribe, and uh, hit that bell icon so you can find out when I release new videos. Check out my playlist, including the playlist on this HVAC replacement project. Uh, overall, I probably saved about three and a half thousand dollars doing this myself, even though it has been a frustratingly long process with crappy tech support that is non-existent. But anyway, thanks for watching.